Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Sorry I was so long, darling. You know you're very beautiful tonight. Thank you. I've told you you're quite handsome yourself. You know, as I was getting into this thing tonight, I realized that only a few hundred years ago, we Dessalines dressed like this all the time. It suddenly occurred to me, what did they wear at a costume party? Well, from what I've heard of the Dessalines, I think they wore their swords high and their smiles fixed. Don't you talk that way about the family. Don't forget you're part of it. What's the matter, kid? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. We're silly, but just before you came in, I've been thinking about other years in this house, that's all. Drew? Oh, you know I love you very much, don't you? My marriage to Drew is past. It's over. But you were thinking about it, and about him. All right, I was thinking about him. But I was thinking about you, too. You know, at times you do remind me of him, though. Maybe just a tone in your voice or the way you smile. But he was the Dessaline I thought I knew. You're the one I really know. I suppose there is a resemblance between Drew and me. When we were growing up, we were often taken for brothers instead of cousins. That's where the resemblance ends. Darling, Drew doesn't even exist anymore. For you or for me. I've waited for you so long, Kit. Now in just a few more days, we'll be married. Yes. Are you all ready? Yes, I suppose we should get back to the guests. Thank you. Dear magician, are you very good at magic? Then turn this into another tray of drinks, will you? <laughs> oh, the costumes are wonderful, aren't they? <laughs> Sabine, look over there. The costume gives me the shivers. It's such a morbid thing to wear to a party, isn't it? Well, darling, some people have a liking for that morbid type of humor. A toast, a toast. I propose a toast. Kid, kid, I must speak to you. Oh, just a minute, Melinda. If all be true that I do think, there are five reasons that we should drink. Good wine being dry, and we shall be by and by, or any other reason why. 
<laughs> Kid, come over here, please. What did you want to tell me, Melissa? Oh, Kid, it's terrible. They've cut in on all the programs. Claire and I heard it on our way over in the car. Drew's escaped. Are you sure? Yes. He escaped from the prison a couple of hours ago. We could hardly believe it when we heard it on the radio. I'll have to keep this quiet. Yes, please don't tell anyone else, will you? No. You come with me, Kit. I can't believe it. Happy Jack, page seven. <laughs> Colonel Rufus B. Worthington, famous southern racehorse owner. Drew has escaped, if he has. Stolen this morning from the... You know what that can mean, don't you? Yes. This kind of hatred is capable of anything. Now that he knows we're going to be married... He... Shocking, the city of New Orleans, which remembers but a few years ago the notorious murder of Jeanette Marcel by Drew Dessalain, a son of one of Louisiana's oldest families. A bizarre touch was added to the disappearance of Desalane from state prison when it was reported that in the escaped prisoner's cell was found a copy of Poe's Mask of the Red Death. Because of this, and because it is last night of carnival, officials have spread a citywide warning that Desalane may be headed for the Mardi Gras to become lost in the crowds of costumed revelers, there perhaps to commit further acts of violence. Mask of the Red Death. The mask. The mask. I remember. There appeared among the revelers the figure of death. Sabine, that man we saw in the hall in the shroud. It must have been Drew. He must be here. He is here. The wires have been cut. What are we going to do? Get the police. I'll send one of the servants. Wait a minute. You better take my gun. No, I'll only be a minute. in the hearts of the most reckless, which cannot be touched without emotion, even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally jests, there are matters of which no jest can be made. The whole company indeed seemed now deeply to feel in the costume and bearing of the stranger 
neither wit nor propriety existed. He was tall and gaunt and shrouded from head to foot in the habiliments of the grave. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a corpse that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the difference. When the eyes of the revelers fell upon this spectral image, they were seen to be convulsed in the first moment with a strong shudder, either of terror or distaste. Kit! It's true! It is, Drew. He knows every inch of this guy. Maybe we'd better go back in the house and wait for the police. I don't like the idea of waiting to be killed. Perhaps it wasn't true. Could have been someone playing a stupid joke on us. We'll find out. <laughs> Look, have you seen anyone pass here, a figure in black with a sort of a death mask? Don't stop us now. A couple of dogs are chasing us. Come on, Tom. Let's go find a cellar and catch some Darling, light. Please, let's get back into the house. Wait a minute. When we were kids, Drew and I had a hiding place. Kid, you go and leave this to me. No, I don't want to be away from you. All right, keep close. Searched the grounds, found nothing. He probably beat it back into the city. I don't think so. Mm, I don't think so either. I'm sure he hasn't. The reports I got from the prison and your information of what's happened here indicate he has no intention of leaving. Lieutenant, what did the reports from the prison say? Well, Mr. Deslini, since he heard you were going to be married again, he's become a rather dangerous man. It's so horrible to think that any man out there behind a mask could be Drew. We'll ask everyone to unmask now, instead of waiting till midnight. Yes, but before you do, I'd like to post my men around the ballroom. All right, and then I'll make the announcement. Oh, I'd rather you be with Mrs. Desilene when it's made. Upstairs would be safer than the ground floor. Yes, we could wait in my sitting room. Fine. I'll go and make arrangements with the orchestra leader to tell everyone. If you'll wait here with Mrs. Desilene, I'll see to it you have enough time to post your men before he makes the announcement. I think he went for a cigarette in the garden, sir. Thank you. Now, am I right in assuming there's no other entrance into your sitting room except from the hall, Mrs. Desmond? Only the French doors. Mm -hmm. 
Is there any other window in the room? No. Up at this large window in my bedroom. Is there a balcony under that window? No, no balcony. Then I'd say it's impossible for anyone to attack you or Mr. Desaline once you're safely inside the room. Now, I want you to remain in that room until I call for you. Don't leave it under any circumstances, no matter what you hear from below, understand? Yes, I understand. But don't you think it'll be dangerous for the guests? Oh, it's a chance we'll have to take. Well, Lieutenant, perhaps we should tell them why they're unmasking. No, well, that might lead to panic and give Desaline a chance to escape. Why have you been hiding? Don't you like your own party? I think it's wonderful. Ha! What's with these rogues? Who deign appear before our queen thus regaled? What's the matter? You get your costume? Uh, please forgive me, both of you, but you... You see, I have to... Mrs. Desaline will join you in a little while. You'll have to forgive our intrusion. Enough be said the cap doth fit. Intrusion is an ugly word. I shall go and summon legions to rid this house of somber heads. Come on, Nero. Let's go find you a fiddle and set the world on fire. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're back. You can take Mrs. Desaline upstairs now. Joe, you go with them. Make sure the French doors are locked. Right. <laughs> Make sure this door is locked, please. Everything upstairs is okay. I don't understand why I went to another number, do you? Maybe those were the instructions to allow us time enough to get organized down here. Steve, ask the orchestra leader to step over here. Right. Darling, do you think somebody could have helped Drew? I mean, with the costumes. He could have so easily told them he, he needed them for a joke. That way, he, he could have been the pirate, Mandarin, anybody. Just by telling them he needed them for a joke. It isn't a joke. Sabine. My dear, a cavalier's costume is not too unusual. I plan tonight very carefully. Sabine, where is he? Where is he? So without grace. I was always so pleased with the graceful way you did everything. Of course, it may be too much to ask at this moment. Yes, you planned all these horrible moments, didn't you? Hand them all before you killed me. I could have killed you at any time tonight, quickly, very efficiently. But I wanted to watch your face when I killed you. I want you to watch my face. I want it to be the last image you see before you die. How much you hate me. As much as I loved you. But you wouldn't believe that. You wouldn't believe I killed Jeanette because of my love for you. I never loved her at all. But you wouldn't believe that. And when I killed her to hold on to our love, you deserted me. You're insane. You're insane. You're insane. 
insane to think I'd let you live our life with Sabine. But Drew, you can't go on killing. You can't. They're all helping me to kill. They even told me to lock the door. Drew, please listen to me. I... There isn't much time, Kit. Maybe I didn't understand. I, I didn't realize how much you really did love me. It's no good, Kit. Listen to me, Drew. If you kill me, you'll die too. There are police all around here. You can't escape. Perhaps. Perhaps not. I'll go away with you. Then we can both live. Please listen to me, Drew. You can't get away with it without my help. Are you worried for me or for yourself? For both of us. You want to live. That's your only thought. You're pretending that you want to go away with me. But all you really want to do is live. And you think with a little time, Sabine will come to help you. Sabine isn't coming, Kit. <sighs> Do you remember his present when we were married? The heavy silver candelabra. <gasps> no! Sabine. Yes. That's what I wanted to see. Your face filled with despair. Being afraid for yourself wasn't enough to make you feel it. Now you know how it is. To have nothing to live for. Now you know how it's been for me. I hate you, Drew. Hate you. You've done everything hideous a man can do. People have loved you, but you've destroyed them all with your, your jealousies and your insanity. And even now you're torturing me. You haven't even the decency to, to kill me and get it over and done with quickly, have you? Yes. Now that you know how I felt all those nights pacing myself. Well, do it. Kill me. What more are you waiting for? Kill me. What are you waiting for? Nothing, Kit. <laughs> people to unmask. Well, it's early yet. It's not customary to do it until 12 o'clock. I thought you got instructions from Mr. Desaline. Not me. Funny. Yes, I'm all right. 